Good morning. My name is Kyla Tatum. I'm a second former and one of the vice presidents of the Sports Business Club. Our club mission is to teach students about the behind the scenes business in professional sports by learning from leaders in the industry. The impact of sports is bigger than what happens on the field or the court. Sports have the power to bring people together, regardless of their race, religion, age, or nationality. Leaders in the sports industry use their platform to improve the lives of others, advocate for civil rights, and teach us all lessons of hard work, determination, and perseverance. Which is why we are honored to have with us today an NBA legend and humanitarian who has impacted many lives around the world, Mr. Dikembe Mutombo. Mr. Mutombo played in the NBA for 18 seasons. He's an eight-time NBA All-Star, four-time NBA Defensive Player of the Year, and he made the All-NBA team three times. He's the second most blocks in NBA history, 3,256 to be exact, and he was elected to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Mr. Mutombo is a legend both on and off the court. He's the founder, chairman, and president the Dikembe Mutombo Foundation, which is dedicated to improving the health, education, and quality of life for the people of his home country, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The foundation <coughs> built the Biyama Marie Mutombo Hospital and Research Center, named after his late mother, which has provided care for over 140,000 patients. He's a global ambassador for UNICEF and a global ambassador and board member for the Special Olympics. He has earned numerous awards for his dedication, generosity, and impact, including the Good Remote Humanitarian Award from the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, the Jackie Robinson Humanitarian Award from the United States Sports Academy, and he even earned the President's Service Award, and so many more. But if I read them all, I would need Mr. Mutombo to write me a note to excuse me from being late to class. Mr. Mutombo, <laughs> Mr. Mutombo holds degrees in linguistics and diplomacy from Georgetown University, and he speaks nine languages. He's been married to his wife, Rose, for over 20 years, and has six children. Please welcome to the stage Ty Tatum, president of the Sports Business Club, and Mr. Dikembe Mutombo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ty Tatum, and I'm the president of the Sports Business Club. Mr. Rotumbo, we are so honored to welcome you to Lawrenceville today. I would like to begin by asking you a couple of questions, and we are all very eager to hear from you. Then I'll open up with a Q&A session at the end. So yesterday, the entire school celebrated Martin Luther King Day with a full day of service in the community. As a global citizen and humanitarian, can you tell us what Martin Luther King Day means to you? Um. First, I want to say good morning. Good morning. Come on, it seems like a lot of people are still sleeping here. This morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. First, I want to say thank you so much to Ty and to the institution for having me here. I know it was not easy for me to come here this morning. And I want to thank each one of you who took time out of your busy schedule for your duty to come here and listen to me today talking. Um, as this week, especially yesterday, as we celebrate Martin Luther King, uh, for everything he ever done for this world, not just the United States of America, Martin Luther King is a hero, is a humanitarian, he was a humanitarian, he was an activist, someone who stood for those who needed to speak for them. And I think um, that's where I learned so many of my lessons. I think we as human beings who were brought in this society, 
to contribute. So I think Martin Luther King kind of left us with a great legacy. What should we do about our neighbors as uh, we walk around every day? And what can we do as part of service? And uh, I'm glad that so many of you guys were willing to do some, some services for others. And so we know that you have done so much good with the Kepe Mutombo Foundation and have successfully opened a hospital in honor of your mother. Um, can you share more with us about your inspiration and mission behind your foundation? Um, the main purpose of me building the hospital was really, I got sick and tired seeing people dying at a young age um, in the continent of Africa, especially where I come from in the Congo. Um, I come from uh, the society where women live until age of 44, men live at the age of 43. So I felt like as I grew up and seeing young people dying before age of five, that if I get a chance and opportunity to succeed, I want to do something. Um, my dream in life was to becoming a doctor. First I have to go to school, like so many of you guys are doing here today. And uh, graduate from high school to go to college. And I thought about going to medical school. Um, when I got to Georgetown, uh, things changed up. But I went there, played basketball, which I made a lot of money. But uh, I felt like I had some money to do something with it. And I said, no, I need to go and go help my people. And I built a beautiful hospital, as you saw. Awesome. And so in the video we just watched, you mentioned your life philosophy, that everyone needs support in order to succeed. Um, can you tell us about some of the people who helped you succeed in your life? There's nobody in this world who got to the top by themselves. You can walk in this room all the way down, all the way upstairs, and ask each one in this room, how did you get where you are today in your life? And nobody would claim that they got there by themselves. There was always someone who did help you. Maybe your mom and dad didn't help you, but your teacher was there. Your grandmother was there. Maybe it was your uncle. Maybe it was somebody who worked on campus who always say hi to you, who made you understand a few things are very important in the life. So there's no way a successful man or woman will stand up to them and say that uh, I did this in my own. And that's why I always say that I would have not sit in this chair where I'm sitting today if it was not because of my parents, my brothers, who introduced me to a game of basketball, if it was not because of John Thompson, who asked me if I can play the game of basketball at the university when I was not even thinking about basketball when I was in college, and all those, all my coaches, who helped me work very well for me to become a great basketball player that I did. So you mentioned uh, Mr. Mutombo wanted to be a doctor at Georgetown University, and you studied pre-med, uh, but ended up in the NBA. <laughs> so was it always your dream to play in the NBA? What was your dream? No, no, no. Uh, I didn't like basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry that our deputy commissioner is here, but uh, I, don't, I really didn't like basketball. Uh, Basketball, I was not a fan of the game. Uh, I thought basketball was a little bit violence. And they were bumping each other. I was like, no. I enjoyed playing soccer. I enjoyed being a goalie, just sitting down in the back waiting for the ball to come. <laughs> and, you know, when, you know, when you're a goalie, sometimes the game can go for 20 minutes, the ball don't come your way. So it was a great sport. And, uh, <laughs> until my brother stopped pushing me to the game, and uh, I keep saying no. Uh, to make my story short, when I arrived in Georgetown, I knew that I'm not going to play basketball. I'm there to study because that I won my scholarship from my high school to come to America and study medicine. And uh, on the first day of campus, as I was walking around, my dean uh, asked me, so, oh, we're so happy to have you on the basketball team. <laughs> One of you guys talking to me, they say, yes, Mutombo. I say, no, I'm not in the basketball team. They say, why? We need you in the basketball team. 
So I really didn't know what she was saying, and then she said, no, tomorrow we have some meeting for you. You should go meet with her. I was school president, which was Father Ely, and then they took me there, and I was lucky enough to meet our school president, who have also gone to Congo when he was young in the 50s. And then he told me about the story. He said, Ken Bay, we're happy to have you here. We know you want to study medicine, but can you think about maybe next year, join our team? I said, um, I don't know. I think about it. But every day I went to class, the pressure was mounting, mounting every day. And uh, then I said, yes. That's a great story. So, <laughs> so you played against many great players like Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. Um, who would you say was your toughest matchup at the NBA? Um, I think my toughest matchup would be uh, Akim Alajma. Um, I think I think Akim Alajma to me um, was one of the best players to ever play in the center position because I was not a guard, so I would not say Michael Jordan because I didn't guard Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan didn't guard me. And Michael Jordan didn't want to come to the basket when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Also the offense. Uh, no 
not just by becoming the first rookie to make the All-Star team in the NBA, but they were just great. But I used to just black shot and shake my head, and people think I was crazy, what was I doing? And I think uh, guys was not getting the message, and they were trying to see come making another layout. Then I start giving them the finger. <laughs> and uh, I thought maybe they would stop. But they didn't stop after 18 years. And uh, they ended up making me to become the Kimmy Mutombo that I am today. Okay. And so, what advice would you give to us high school students um, going through our journey? And how would you like to be remembered, please? I think uh, what I would tell to each one of the, the kids in this room that. Um, you need to work hard in life, and uh, your legacy will be based on your behavior and your contribution to the humankind. What are you doing around others that our people will remember you? The difference that we are making in a society that our people will remember you. Each one of us should live the life where you are making a difference. You don't need to have money to make a difference, but you can lead by the example how you help your classmates, how you help the teacher. How you can be the one who always opening people the door on anyone coming to the cafeteria. You always opening the door. You might be the first one in the line, but you choose yourself to open the door for everybody who's coming in the class. Leading by the example that our people will remember you. You don't have to wake up in the morning, go build a $30 million hospital for, so people can clap around and say, oh, look at him, he made a difference in society. Because the problem that we see today, we might try to solve it, but there will be more problems in the future. Our parents, our grand-grandparents, did face so many challenges and they're trying to do their best for us to don't have as much challenge as they did. We, today, we have to do whatever they take to also make sure that uh, our children and our grandchildren don't face more challenges. And I think that uh, I'm doing my part. I'm asking each one of you to go out, continue to do your part. That's the only way we're going to make the world better. So thank you so much for your time. Now uh, we will take some questions from the audience because I'm sure you guys are curious. Um, but before that, we have a surprise for you all. Um, Mr. Rotumbo signed, uh, so kindly signed five autograph uh, pictures of himself. And so they are under five chairs. So please look under your chair. <laughs> Freshmen, they're up there too. Okay, so now, anyone that has a question, please raise their hand. Um, Vice Presidents Kylo Tatum, Kwesi Adu Diawo, and Matthew McChesney will pass you a microphone. So please. Hi, um, what size shoes do you wear? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> How did you feel when you got dumped on by Michael Jordan? Oh. <laughs> okay. I know um, a lot of people always say, but you were the best uh, sharp black in the league. How did you let Michael Jordan dunk on you? Have you watched the video? <laughs> Where's the kids asking? <laughs> uh, I just want to know if you watched the video. Yes, I know you did watch the video. <laughs> but some people do forget that it took Michael nine years to get one dog. <laughs> Michael that question <laughs> because he will 
tell you that uh, he was fortunate enough to play in the NBA more than uh, 15 years plus. But there was not a guy that stood in his way better than to give him a tumble. He would tell you. <laughs> If you could play with any player in the NBA today, who would it be? If you could play with any player in the NBA today, who would it be? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's a good question. Uh, one thing I would say, the game you have changed. I play in a different eras. Um, I play in the era where guys were being taken to the hospital almost every day. Uh, the game, uh, the style have changed. I would have not shoot the three uh, if I was playing. You know my average in the three point line is only 0 for 1. So, but if I play today, that means I have to guard guys outside. But if I have to put it in, hmm, I have to put myself in first. I put myself in. I would, yeah, I need to have Steph Curry, yes. Uh, I would have LeBron. Um, and maybe I would have uh, Kevin Durant. Um, I need a power four, but there's so many of them. But I would get maybe Anthony, yes. That would be my starting. All they have to do is score the point and let me play defense. <laughs> uh, please join me in thanking Mr. Mutombo.